After 14 years in office, retaining power was always going to be a tricky task for the Tories. Ever since the fall of Boris Johnson, they've been behind Labour in the opinion polls, and any sense of party unity completely fell apart. As a result of this, the party has seen fragmentation kick in, something that has only served to worsen the Tory polling. This doom loop of bad polling causing further fragmentation and further fragmentation causing worsening polling created a space for a new right-wing upstart. This came in the form of Reform UK, a party that Farage helped to set up and run, although he has only just taken on the mantle of leadership since the election was announced. Now, the result of all of this was a devastating night for the Tories, who were pushed from the right by Reform UK, and who were damaged by tactical voting on the left between the Liberal Democrats and Labour. In total, and with five seats still to declare, the Tories won a mere 119 seats, the worst in their history. With infighting so bad beforehand, the question now is, how much worse will it get? And ultimately, could this be the beginning of the end of the Conservative Party as we know it? Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Okay, so just a heads up, obviously the last few days have been really chaotic here, so we've actually recorded this video on Friday morning as the results have just come in, so a lot of the video is written like that. But don't worry, all of the information is still true, it's just we wrote this on Friday morning. Now, it's worth starting this video by explaining that the Conservatives did actually do slightly better than the polls expected. Some polls were predicting that the Tories were going to win less than 100 seats. Some even suggested that they might win a mere 50 or 60 seats. When the exit poll was released at 10pm, it became clear that these polls were way off and that the Tory result was actually going to be much closer to the upper end of the MRP poll predictions. Specifically, the exit poll suggested that the Tories were on track to achieve 131 seats. The exit poll was close, but in the end the Conservatives only won 119 seats, just a tad lower than the exit polls predicted. All in all, the Tories have survived the worst case scenario, but it's important not to confuse this with Thursday night being a good night for the Tories. They've still won the fewest seats in their history, and they're still going to inevitably spend the next five years fighting amongst themselves about who's to blame for their historic defeat in 2024. The fact that they were already squabbling when they had a majority and were in government demonstrates just how much trouble they're in. After the Tories lost power in 1997, again there was a great deal of infighting, with them having three different leaders between 2001 and 2005. It seems right now that the next five years could be worse than even this. At the time of writing, Sunak has not yet resigned, or announced his intention to resign, as Tory leader. There is a possibility that he'll announce a plan for his resignation as Tory leader later on Friday morning, the morning that we're recording this video. However, even if he doesn't, it's unlikely he'll last much longer as Tory leader, and in the coming weeks or months, it's probable that we'll see his resignation and a subsequent leadership election. There are then two possibilities. The first is that a number of Conservatives throw their hat in the ring, and the candidates are whittled down to two, one that represents the right of the party and one that represents the centre. If we had to predict who these candidates would be a couple of days ago, we'd have said Penny Mordaunt as the centrist candidate and Kemi Badenoch as the right-wing candidate. However, Mordaunt lost her seat at the election to Labour, and Kemi Badenoch's seat could soon be challenged in the courts, as was a problem with postal votes not being sent out. If this were to happen, then Badenoch would not legally be considered an MP until the issue is resolved, making her ineligible to stand in the leadership election. Nonetheless, if the leadership election does end up going to the Conservative Party members, irrespective of who the two candidates are, it's likely to be a publicly bruising affair. It will further expose the factionalism at the heart of the Conservative Party. And this, coupled with the new Reform MPs in the Commons, who are likely going to try and stir up further division, it will only cause the Tories more problems. The other possibility, though, is that there is no member vote. And, like Sunak, a new leader is simply selected by the MPs. This would be less publicly damaging for the Conservative Party, but could risk exacerbating factionalism. Ultimately, whoever wins will find it difficult to unite the two warring Tory factions, and whichever faction loses the leadership is inevitably going to try and make life difficult for the faction that does. Either way, whether the new leader is elected by the members or not, 
On top of issues with party unity, they will also have to decide what to do about Reform UK. Now, while Reform didn't win as many seats in the general election as the exit poll suggested, they're still going to have influence in the House of Commons, and this election really sets them up to win some by-elections in the next Parliament, and potentially even more seats at the next general election. The new Tory leader will have to decide whether it's best to try and fight them, increasing the risk of vote splitting on the right and potentially making it more difficult for the Tories to achieve power again, or to try and invite them inside the Tory party, something that would be seen as an admission of weakness and potentially even defeat. Given the fact that the Tories overperformed the polls and have ended up with a relatively sizable number of seats, while reform underperformed in the polls, at least in terms of vote share, A merger now looks far less likely than it did 24 hours ago. Perhaps the final variable worth considering is Boris Johnson. Looking at the polls, the Tories will know that if they had been able to more effectively squeeze out reform, they might have actually been able to compete with Starmer's Labour, which ended up underperforming quite significantly. While he might be a polarising figure and obviously tarnished by his mediocre record in government, Boris Johnson has a proven ability to out-Farage Farage, and fed undeniably well against Starmer at the dispatch box. Even if he's unpopular with a wider public, their historic defeat might make the Tory party a bit more nostalgic for the heady days of 2019, and a dramatic last-minute return would very much be on-brand for Johnson, who made a cameo in the final days of the campaign where he notably didn't mention Sunak, but instead bragged about his own achievements in office. Regardless, this is clearly a monumental election for the UK, and when these kinds of elections happen, people tend to like to save newspapers and magazines with the headlines for posterity. The best way you could possibly do that is by picking up a copy of Too Long. A 60-page, high-quality magazine full of TLDR's very best journalism. This issue is focused on the UK election, diving deep into the campaign, the results, and how the winners plan to fix Britain. It's more than just Britain, though, with stories including the European parliamentary elections, the countries likely to join the EU next, the latest from Gaza, the rise of Melee, and of course, the US election. Now, we've decided to make the magazine for two reasons. Firstly, it allows our journalists to write in more detail, diving deeper and ignoring algorithmic restrictions to produce the best work we can. And secondly, it's a good way for you to support TLDR and will help us to produce free YouTube videos as long as we can. If you're interested, then you can pick up a copy from our website, where we're selling two editions of the magazine. Firstly, there's the standard edition, and then there's the premium edition, which gets your name printed in the thank you section of the magazine, and exclusive access to our behind-the-scenes podcast. Oh, and by the way, we're going to be making an issue of Too Long every four months. So if you want to ensure that you never miss an issue, then you can subscribe, which gets you a 25% discount. If you have more questions, there's a full Q&A linked in the description, where you'll also find a link to our store. And while you're there, make sure you use the code ELECTIONWEEK to get an additional £2 off any purchase. Thanks so much for hearing me out, and if you are interested, please do pick up a copy, as it's a great way to support our journalism and help us to continue making free YouTube videos as long as we can.